Welcome to another episode of Nimsoli Explains with me, your host, Nimsoli. Tonight, let there be light. I'm going to go over the lighting layers in Roll20 and show you how to use them. Hope you'll find it very useful. But first, do me a favor, like the, the video if you uh, find it useful. Subscribe to the channel if you want to find out more uh, when the next episode is going to drop. And uh, share with a friend. Let me know, uh, let them know what you think about it. Uh, and if you got any suggestions, please leave a comment. I'm really interested in what you have to say. Now, into lighting. We'll begin tonight by jumping into a new map I created for exploring light using Campaign Cartographer. I put some columns in here, or a column. I put uh, a wall in here that you have to draw around. And I also put uh, some windows and a door. And I wanna show you how to do all of that in Roll20's lighting layer. But first, know that it requires a, either a plus or a pro subscription level in order to use light. I think it's one of the most underused features in the games that I've played with uh, my friends because they don't really know how to use it. So let me show you some quick tips on how to make lighting and use it effectively in your game. So first we have to switch over to the dynamic lighting layer. Uh, it is the only layer that is not hotkeyed. So you'll have to do this with your map. Now we're gonna zoom in a little bit so that and then move down here in the bottom corner. And you'll see this little corner right here. We're gonna go over here and select polygon lines. And then we will choose a color to represent our walls. Uh, black is a good color for that. Uh, anything really that is distinctive. You're gonna want at least two colors for your light because you're gonna want your doors to be a separate color so that you can identify them later when players remove them. Let's choose this color right here and use this for our uh, walls. So you just click down here, then click here, and then click here, and then right click. And there's your first lighting uh, layer. Now we're gonna move, we're gonna switch over here to this token and move up. And then you will see that, uh, we're gonna choose another polygon line and then go from here to here and then right click and then pointer. And then we'll go around this corner here. I might speed some of this up uh, so that you don't get bored with me talking and right clicking. So click, click, there you go. I wanna make sure that when you have uh, lines that meet up that they don't overlap, uh, I mean, that they do overlap. You wanna make sure that there are no gaps unintended in your lighting. That could allow your players uh, information you don't want them to have at the time. But here we're just doing lights. Um, and now we've got this one right here, which is the wall. So we're gonna go down the wall. I'm gonna put a point here and then stop because I have to move the map slightly. So we are going to click back on here on the line. And now we're just going to finish up our line. And then we'll take this line here, go all the way over here. Now we're going to switch back to the pointer and move. Now we're going to draw the line again. We almost had it that time. I don't like where that one is, so we just undo that. And then that's over. You can overlap if you like. Overlapping's good. Won't hurt anything. Now we'll do the door. Now to do the door, let's choose a different color that one will, that will stand out. Uh, 
Blue is very good for that. Red's really good for that. Now we're going to click here. You want to click here and then right click. And now there's your door. That means that when players open it, you can pull this out of the way and the players can move in. I'll show you what that looks like once we finish drawing our light. There's one other thing I want to show you, uh, and that's you can use the draw shapes. So we're going to use the alt to draw a circle. We're going to go back to our original color and we're going to draw a circle right here in the center of this column. Uh, oh, control. let's undo that. I didn't have the right button held down. You can see here there's a circle. There we go. Now let's go back to our objects and layers token and we want to check our lighting map. So first thing we want to do is uh, go down here to the select, click on our, our token, and then hit uh, Control uh, Command L or Control L. Um, oh, before we do that, we have to go up here and go to our lighting demo and we want to turn on dynamic lighting. I also want Explorer mode. I'll show you what that does. Now, hit save. Let's go and make sure that our player has dark vision. It looks like they do, so that's awesome. Let's just double check that real quick. Go to dynamic lighting. They have 60 foot with dimming. Um, I'll show you some other neat effects you can do. So let's see, you can see here that they're, they uh, cannot see through the wall. And if you do hit the control L, now you can see exactly what it looks like for them. And you can see the dimming and the darkness and the fact that they can't see, but they can see a little bit through the window. So they can go in here and, ooh, they can see that body. They can see the knocked over table. They can look around. So that's something to be aware of if you're going to have windows. Maybe the windows are shuttered and you can treat them like a door. But now we're going to go back into the lighting layer. We're going to move this door out of the way. Now we're going to go back to our player token, uh, back to the objects thing, click on it, control L. Now you can see they can only see the little bit of the room that we've given them. Uh, now you can see here there's another window how that looks. Um, now we're over here. Now take a look in here. You've got all kinds of stuff. And we notice way back here, that lighting is very different. And you can see as we get closer, the stronger the shadow gets. But say you want to put a fire right in here. That's something that is often done. So let's go over here to uh, the library, the art library, and we're gonna search for a fire. So we can find an asset in here and then we'll just look for something that looks like a uh, fire. So we've got uh, this little thing here that looks like a fire. So we're gonna drag it out onto our map. And then I wanna shrink it down so that it fits in that little square. Now, what we want to do and to place it precisely, just hold down the Alt or the Option key, and then now you can do it. Now, we want to move this to the map layer. Now, we'll go to the map layer. Uh, I like using the uh, hotkeys, so Command M gets you to the map layer. Uh, we're going to turn this into uh, a light. So what we want to do is it emits bright light, uh, 20 feet and low light, 10 feet, uh, no 20. We'll do 20 because that's pretty standard for a torch. Uh, and then we are going to give it a lighting color. This is a new feature that they've come out with recently and allows you to color the light I like it because, you know, orange torch makes 
a lot of sense. And there are some legacy settings you might want to do, light multiplier, legacy lighting. Don't light multiplier is needed in some older games, uh, but not really needed anymore. And then legacy lighting. Uh, try to leave that off. So there you go. Now we're going to go back to our uh, object token. Now you can see here, this is now part of the map. It now uh, does light. Let's hit control L. Now you can see here, it's very bright in this room. Uh, if we go into our token and we uh, turn off night vision, now my character can only see based off of what that light is there. So it's kind of a neat effect. It adds a little bit more depth to your dungeon. And I hope this is something that you can find useful in your next game. Well, I hope you found tonight's episode useful. I find lighting to be highly underused, like I said before. Now, it could be that some people don't have it because it does require you to pay in order to have it. But I think it's one of the best features of Roll20 is how they do lighting. I hope you have an awesome next game, and I'll see you next time.